Hey everybody, this is Carissa with Inky Fairy Designs and I'm back with another fun Brutus Monroe project this week. Um, we're going to be making some ATCs. You'll see that all across our social media this week and I want to show you how to make mine. I'm using these awesome ATC uh, pre-made cards from Brutus Monroe. I am also going to be using some media paste and gesso that is now available from Brutus Monroe. Of course, for any stamping I do, I'll be using the detail ink in Raven. All of these supplies will be listed down below in the description box, so you can check them out there. Um, to do some of my background coloring, I pulled out the aqua pigments in fuchsia, yellow orange, turquoise, and violet. Um, I just, I love making rainbows on the backgrounds like this. I'm also using this mixed media stencil and this slimline stencil. I'll be using the stamp set for some texture in the background as well as the sentiments and some of the circle dies from the foundation dies. So that is, oh, one more thing not part of the Brutus Monroe is this gilt spray that I'll be using from Dina Wakely Media just to add a little bit of splatters. So let me go ahead and show you how I got started. So I am going to cover the little ATC chipboard pieces with some a thin layer of gesso so I just use a big flat brush to do that let it dry and then I will add um, some media paste through a stencil so this one's already dry I'm going to open up that media paste I'm going to pull out this awesome uh, kind of gear stencil and I'm just going to spread that using a palette knife through the stencil. I'm going to keep it nice and even. I do want it to be a bit thick, but I'm just going to evenly spread that all the way across the ATC card. This is going to create some texture in the background. It's going to really show up nicely once I start adding some color. So once I'm done with that and I'm satisfied with the amount of media paste I have on there, I will set that aside and let it dry as well. And I'll do that on a few different uh, ATCs. I end up making three in this video, but they're so fun to make and they are because of the size, a, a general size of an ATC, which is an artist trading card if you haven't heard of that before. Um, it is two and a half by three and a half inches. So they're basically the size of like baseball cards and trading cards and stuff like that. And the purpose of them is to create little pieces of your art and then trade them with friends, other artists, um, things like that. Um, it's such a great size that if you're new to mixed media or you've always wanted to give it a try, but you're intimidated by large journals and canvases, these sizes of the ATC cards are perfect because it's not super big, you don't have to be intimidated by it, and um, you're not going to mess up. In fact, I don't think you can possibly mess up when you try mixed media because there's always layers that you can add and um, change things. So here you can see I've added the aqua pigments and I'm using a, a watercolor brush to kind of move them around, blend them in together. Um, you can see I didn't have green, but of course, uh, adding the yellow and the blues together creates that beautiful green. And um, I'm gonna sop some of that up, soften it a little bit with a paper towel. And then I'll continue just kind of moving it around until I am happy with the color, the brightness, and uh, this is where you can really see the texture coming through with the stencil and the media paste. So before adding color to it, you just definitely wanna make sure that your media paste is completely dry. You can use a heat tool to speed that process up or set them aside while you work on other things and let them dry naturally. Either way works. Uh, I used a heat tool on some of them and found that this media paste did not um, react too badly to that heat. So now I'm going to add a few more, kind of brighten up some of those colors, and I just go back and forth until I am happy with that.
All right, so next I'm going to bring in some of the Simon Hurley Create inks. Now, I don't think I showed those in the beginning when I was showing the supplies that I'm using, but I did pull out three colors uh, of the Simon Hurley Create ink, and now I'm just using some blending brushes to spot color in some more. So um, this just brightens up the color a little bit, and makes it stand out some more and you know it's just another layer uh, I like the way that these uh, layer together they blended beautifully over the media paste as well as the aqua pigments and I'm just kind of going over wherever I had blue on the background I am intensifying that with the ink and then the same with the green and the pink that I pulled out so I'm just going to continue on doing that. And then once I'm happy with that, we'll move on to the next step. So this is an easy way. The aqua pigments do tend to dry back um, much lighter than they are when you first add them. And that's just generally the property of watercolors. Uh, they do tend to dry much lighter than uh, when you are applying them wet, um, but you could always add more layers and intensify that uh, however I thought adding the ink over top would be um, a better thing to do because I didn't want to add any more layers of wet media um, I just wanted to kind of add a bit more brightness so the ink worked well for that now um, this is one of the slimline stencils this is like the sequin builder stencil so it's Design. You can create all kinds of different patterns with your sequins, just placing them through those little dots. However, I loved it, and I, when I first saw it, it reminded me of the sequin um, negative sheets that I used to get back in the day when I first started mixed media. You would actually be able to get these little uh, hodgepodge packages of the sequin negative sheets, and I would use those all the time to do exactly what I did here and just add another layer on my piece um, with uh, some gesso and kind of brighten it up a little bit. So here's where I'm using the Dina Wakely Media uh, acrylic spray in the gilt and I like it because it's like a metallic color and it just adds a little bit of shine and I just love splatters on my backgrounds. I love this stamp set. Um, you'll have to check it out in the description because I don't have the name offhand right now, but I love the little lights that are hanging, all the different kinds of lights hanging from either string or branches, and I thought it would be fun to add a bit of texture to the background. And you can't really see so much of the design, but it's just adding um, a bit more interest. And then I'm going to ink up the edges of the cards to frame them in a little bit and then I'm bringing in a smaller blending brush to uh, provide some shadows and soften up those edges. I really like the contrast of the black uh, edging around a bright background and so that's what I'm doing here using that same detail ink in Raven with a blending brush. This is actually a makeup brush that I picked up at the dollar store. So you can find these little guys anywhere. And um, then I will um, just really be happy with the background and I'm done with that. So now I'm going to start stamping the sentiments. So I loved the sentiments in this stamp set. They were very uplifting and positive. And when I am making ATCs to send out, that is what I like to add as my focal or my sentiments. I will choose uh, positive uplifting sticker words or sentiment stamps like this. So never stop looking up and follow your dreams are two of the sentiments. And then there's a third one that says shine on, I think. So I just feel like sending these out, you know, sends a little bit of happiness out and um, can really inspire your friends. And so once I'm happy with the stamping, I am going to go ahead and die cut those with one of the circle dies. And now I'm just like figuring out where I want to place them on my card. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to use some double-sided tape uh, to adhere them to the background because we have a lot of texture and uh, media medium on the background. I want to use something very, very um, high 
a stick, <laughs> high stick. So um, before I do that though, I'm going to ink up the edges of the uh, sentiments just so that it softens it a little bit. It's not super stark, um, not too, you know, much of a contrast on that background. And I figured out where I wanted to place them and then um, that decided the color that I wanted to use around that. So once I'm happy with the inking and the placement, I'm going to go ahead and pull out that double-sided tape that I talked about earlier. I'm going to place that on the back and then um, remove that release paper and stick all of the sentiments back onto the ATCs. Once I've done that, I will uh, cut off, I'll pull out my guillotine trimmer and I will cut off any of the excess. So I don't want to leave that circle hanging off. I want it to be, you know, the size of the ATC. So I will just chop that off. Um, this one didn't really cut very well. So I'm going to use my scissors and remove that excess. And then I just decided to use the scissors on this one. And that's perfect. So then I'll go ahead and finish that edge that I cut down to fit the ATC and I'll ink up that last remaining little bit of edge just a little bit so that it, it matches the rest of that sentiment area and I think that really finishes up these cards. I hope you're inspired this week by our uh, challenge to make artist trading cards. They are so fun to make if you've never tried them before. I definitely encourage you to give it a shot. There's so much inspiration from the uh, team this week. Different styles, different looks, and different techniques that I hope you'll check it out. And then also pick up if you're, you know, you don't want to make your own. These little packets of the chipboard ATCs perfectly cut down are great to have because it makes it even easier to create them. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video today. If you enjoyed it, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any future inspiration. And we'd love to see what you're making, so be sure to tag Brutus Monroe on social media as well as join the Facebook group so that we can see your awesome creations. If you're inspired by anything that I create, feel free to tag me as well at Inky Fairy Designs. I love to see what you're making and come by and say hi. Um, so that's it for me this week, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.